Stop the insanity. The earth is not flat. Essentially, no one in Christianity ever believed it. No theologian of any merit ever taught it. It is not taught in the Bible. Sadly, some people today do believe it. I'm Dr. Robert Carter. I'm sitting here with my good friend, Dr. Jonathan Sarfati. Hello, Jonathan. Yeah, g'day, Rob. I'm from the Southern Hemisphere, the other side of the globe. I think we can tell that based on your accent. What accent? <laughs> Are, but aren't there people that say Australia doesn't exist? Well, I don't know what I've done with the rest of my life then, or New Zealand, where I grew up, where I lived for 25 years. And don't the stars look different down there? Well, we have the Southern Cross on our flag, which you can't see from here. And also, when you look at, at the night sky, you can see the stars going clockwise. Well, here they go anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, as you say. I remember my first trip to Australia, I was having the hardest time figuring out how the heavens worked until I turned around with my back to the north and I bent over backwards so everything was going in the right direction. It's like, okay, then I, then I knew where I was in the world. Which right. is funny because that would never be a phenomenon if the earth actually was flat. It'd be totally different. You wouldn't see the things that we do in Australia. And in fact, when we look south anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere, we see the South Celestial Pole. Or if you've got good uh, binoculars, it's... Um, okay, well, what's the, what is the South Celestial Pole for the listeners? Okay, the South Celestial Pole is the center of rotation that you will see the stars rotating around if you have slow motion photography. So for... Northern Hemisphere listeners, when we look to the North Pole, if you could stare at it or take a long, long exposure photograph, you see a bunch of circles of the stars orbiting the North Star. And they go counterclockwise. And if you look south from the Southern Hemisphere, you see the same thing. You see the same thing in the opposite direction, rotating around a star called Sigma Octantis, but it's a very faint star, so you need binoculars. And the thing is, no matter where you are, see on a flat disk, uh, people uh, six um, time zones apart should be 90 degrees apart, and yet they look south and they all see the South Celestial Pole. That's not possible on a flat Earth because you'd be seeing different stars if you were really 90 degrees apart, as you would be six time zones apart. But you and I both know from mm. much experience, because mm -hmm. we've written a lot on this subject, more than I ever should have written, that there's always an excuse. I haven't heard an excuse for some of these, because I think a lot of these guys have never been to the Southern Hemisphere. True, but they say, oh, that's not true, or there's atmospheric lensing, or they, they, they invent some sort of a magic thing that explains a phenomenon that doesn't need any magic at all. It doesn't need any magic if we realize that we're on a, on a globe and not on a disc. So after the South Celestial Pole, Mm -hmm. What's another good bit of evidence? Well, the thing that was known to the ancients uh, that we now know, when we see uh, ships going hull down as they recede from us, they go hull down uh, across a, the horizon. As a professional marine biologist, I can say I have seen this many, many, many times. And when you look through a telescope, it's no different. You'll see a bigger version of the same thing. That's right. And a hull down means that as the ship goes over the horizon the bottom half of the ship disappears over the curve of the earth before the sails or the, the upper superstructure of the ship. And that's been known for a long time, but also sailors coming in would always see the hill before they saw the beach. Then the beach is closer than the hills, but they saw the hills first. Or if they wanted to see the land earlier, you get on the mast because you see it across the down the globe Hence further. the crow's nest. Yeah, there's a good reason for that. Yeah. In fact, you see a lot farther with crow's nest than you can if you're just on the deck. And the thing is, why go to the trouble of building a crow's nest unless there's actually a purpose to it, like seeing further? All right. Now, hold on a second. There are shall we call them more liberal theologians? I don't want to give them mm -hmm. a label that they wouldn't own, but I'll call them liberal theologians. Yep. And a lot of flat earthers, the Christian ones, not that flat earth started in Christianity because it did not. Never, never. But the, there's a huge movement amongst the so-called Christian, so-called flat earthers that the Bible teaches the earth is flat. Okay, but how come no one in church history ever taught a flat earth until Boom. we get the liberal theologians trying to find fault with the Bible in the 19th century with his silly arguments that the Bible teaches a flat earth, uh, and then the myth that Columbus was the one who first found the earth was round, complete and utter lie that you've all been taught. <laughs> in fact, I love that story. I've, I've learned a lot of history from you, by the way. I don't know if you Ooh, know that. I don't. Uh, but, but you're throwing out all these historical things, and I love history, too. Mm. And so studying church history and science history, actually, you started rubbing off on me. And I've been Ooh, digging into it a lot over the last several years. Bad influence on you, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess so. But the Columbus story is amazing. Yeah. Didn't Columbus have 
a manuscript that said something different than the church scholars of the day? Well, the church scholars were right because they knew what Eratosthenes uh, proved before like Christ. 200 something BC. 200 BC. He actually got the circumference of the earth pretty much right. I almost nailed it. And no one's nailed it, but Columbus thought the earth was a bit smaller than it really is. So therefore. 60% the real size? Oh, I forget what it was. Translation of some unit in some foreign language document. So there's no way he should have had enough food and provisions to go the distance he said he was going to do. So the church was right to say, you've, you've got no chance. Yeah. So there was an argument back in Columbus's day. But, but it was not size. flat earth versus round earth. Yes. It was big size versus little size. Exactly. The church scholars are right. Columbus would have died. Yeah, he was, never would have made it to China. A bit of uh, luck in the way that he actually there's a big continent in the way, which yeah, he didn't very, know about, but he called the, the inhabitants Indians because he thought he'd reached India. Yeah. So he was right for the wrong reasons. Exactly. It happens sometimes. Yes. All right. So tons of evidence mm. that we're sitting on a sphere. Yeah. The sphere is rotating and we're moving through the heavens. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't we fly off if we were rotating a thousand miles an hour, as they say? Oh, a thousand miles an hour is, lo is well below escape velocity. That's right. And, and we're talking about at the equator. Yeah. thousand miles. In other words, if the Earth, I'm sorry, I'm going to use miles here. This That's is not fine. scientific numbers, but yeah. the Earth is approximately 24,000 miles in diameter. In circumference, presumably. Very good. Thank you for the scientific correction. The Earth is approximately 24,000 miles in circumference, which means that if you want to do it, if you want to turn around once in 24 hours, it moves yeah. about 1,000 miles an hour at the right. equator. Mm -hmm. That sounds really fast until you realize how big the Earth is. Well, exactly. But also, how many people here, you've bound to be on a, going on the airplane. The airplane's flying about 500 miles an hour. Okay, and you've, you're on the airplane, and the hostess is quite happily pouring drink onto you, and it doesn't fly back in your face. Yeah. But if you if you were actually watching from the Earth, and the plane was transparent like Wonder Woman's plane was meant to be, uh, you'd see everything going at 500 miles an hour. But when you're on the plane... You, you think you're standing still, the hostess is pouring vertically, you drop something, it falls vertically. But that coffee and that thing you drop is moving to 500 miles an hour yeah. sideways. And the thing is, everyone's doing that, so you don't notice it, and this is what we're doing on Earth. Everyone's moving at the same speed, so is the air, so is the, so the yeah. clouds, everything, therefore we don't notice the turning. We do notice when we use gravity measurements, though. Oh, yeah. Because you and I would weigh less at the equator than we do here at about 30-something degrees north, mm -hmm. and even we weigh even differently if we went to the North Pole. And the reason we weigh less at the equator is because we're being pushed outwards by the rotation of the Earth, but it's only a few ounces difference. It's very, but it can be measured. Yeah, definitely measured. And also when you're on a mountain, uh, the gravitational force is a bit less because it's an inverse square law, and that can be measured with very fine uh, scales too. Yes. And so one of the reasons why Mount Chimborazo near the equator is further away from the center of the Earth than Mount Everest it's actually the tallest mountain in the world. Mount Everest isn't, if you're doing it not from sea level, but from center of the Earth, is because the Earth bulges outwards at it the does. equator because of the spin. And yeah, that, quite, you're quite correct there. Yeah, And also, uh, still, it's only 0.3% bulging. So you can say uh, to 0.3% that the Earth is a perfect sphere, but it has that bulge, which does make Chimborazo the, tall, the furthest away from the center. Yeah. So it's totally consistent with living on a spinning globe and totally inconsistent with a flat Earth or even a geocentric Earth. So flat Earthers have a trial. Flat Earthers, we have a challenge for you. Mm -hmm. Direct challenge. Read our article. Uh, but you're not going to do it. In fact, I've never seen a flat Earther who will actually read something I present. They want me to read their stuff, watch their long, boring videos, but they have never really engaged with our arguments. Why do you think that is? I guess because I really haven't got a good argument against what we've been presenting, which has been known for the most part for uh, over a thousand, two thousand, 2000 years. years. Long before NASA, no, nothing to do with NASA. People knew the Earth was round long before NASA even existed. Yeah, yeah, way long. Even, you know, 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, this is all. Didn't Newton say like, wasn't it Newton who wanted to find like the most obvious fact in the world? So we started with, okay, the Earth is round. Well, in fact, even before Newton, you have Thomas Aquinas. Oh, was it Thomas Aquinas Thomas who did Aquinas that? Thomas Aquinas in the yes, 13th yes, yes. century in the Summa Theologiae. That's right, that's where it comes from. Here's something obvious, uh, the roundness of the earth. He didn't expect anyone to dispute it. He thought it was so obvious and well-known that he used that as an obvious fact. And this is the 13th century, so 200 years before Columbus. Isn't that the Dark Ages? So they can't tell you, but and that's also the age of the Gothic cathedrals, which are masterpieces of architecture, which you haven't even equaled. That's right. So what we see is a lot of historical revisionism. We see a lot of theologians 
and a lot of um, popular level media, everything from Bugs Bunny to Big Bang Theory, oh, saying that that people used to think the earth is flat. And it's simply not true. Yeah, go ahead and name some. You wouldn't find more than about five. If you're lucky. You could even, if you're lucky, you I might know find of two, five. and they were super obscure, and they never had any traction in the culture that when they were writing. They're I don't know more than that. Uh, you might, if you're lucky, find five. I think two is the one we've got Okay. Evidence for it. Yeah, so okay. Fair enough. You're being generous to them. I'm being very generous. But when you go to the, the global earth, there's right from the beginning of the Christian era, uh, everyone who discussed the shape of the earth said it was round. So if the Bible taught a flat earth, how come these great Christian scholars missed it? All of them. They all missed it. All of them. I, I know of a church in the denomination I grew up in. It was called St. Bede's. Oh. The Venerable Bede. Wow. People read Bede's history for a thousand years. In fact, up into probably the early 1900s, every theologian read Bede. Mm, as they should. But you pointed out something in Bede that I didn't know about the shape of the earth. Oh, Bede was very clear the earth and this was year a perfect is about sphere. Six or 700 AD? I think in the 700s. Okay. Did he yeah. say the earth is round, not like... Well, yeah, quite very. To make it very clear, he said it wasn't round like a shield, but rather like a ball. Boom. Unambiguous, perfect sphere, he said. And that was a long time ago. So you're talking about 700 years before Columbus set sail, notice. Yeah. But this was common knowledge in the church. Be People read be Bede. Yeah, everyone did. Okay. So what's the take home for our audience? I'm assuming that someone who's really deep into flat earth is not going to like what we say and is probably not going to listen to what we say because that's the, the mindset that we've run into many times. What do we tell to someone who's just interacting with us for the first time or they know someone who thinks the earth is flat what do we tell? How do we tell them to interact with that person? Well, I think what we're doing is hopefully to stop people going down that track because it's very hard to bring them out once they're down that track. We can actually stop them going down that track. That's the thing. So we have a message for pastors, for parents, for, uh, for, for people in the church. The earth is not flat. The Bible doesn't teach it. The church never taught it. The science is totally overwhelmingly globe earth. Yes. Where does someone go to find the answers that we've already written? Creation.com slash, or use this little search box, and what should they search for? You can search for Refuting Flat Earth, because that's the article you and I uh, wrote at length, uh, and we keep on revising it because we're finding more stuff. Yeah. In fact, if they um, Google Refuting Flat Earth outside of Creation.com, it'll still come up in the search engine. It used to be in the top. I don't know if it still is. It was number one last time I checked. Yeah, it was, last, it was number one. That's kind of cool that we have a number one Google search ranking thing. So, so we also got a video that you did, right? A video uh, on the Flat Earth, which is a really good one. I did a video on the Flat Earth at our Creation Super Conference a um, year and a half ago. Mm. I, I felt a little strained in that because I tried to do Flat Earth and geocentrism in the same talk. Right. And that was, that was hard. Well, it is hard, but also notice a lot of flat earth arguments are really pro-geocentric arguments. So it's okay. important to actually uh, make them split the two things. What's the difference? Well, the flat earth is about the shape of the earth, while geocentrism is about the issue of whether the earth moves. And they're totally distinct issues. Isn't it true that most, for most of church history, theologians thought the earth was the center and the sun went around the earth? Well, it's also true that throughout that time, most astronomers and scientists thought the earth was at the center. So the theologians were doing nothing different from what the rest of astronomy was doing. Excellent. And also all throughout most of ancient history and most ancient cultures also. Yeah. Okay. It, was, it seemed to be common sense at the time. It was based on Aristotle's physics, which is well accepted. It was yes. based on Ptolemy's astronomy, again, incredibly well accepted. Yes. It was, a, it was the science of the day. And it took us literally centuries of careful study to reject that theory. Yeah. The okay. rejection produced better results, better predictions. Uh, that's why it won the day, because it was a better theory. Yeah. All right. So looking at that article that we wrote yeah. and that, that video that CMI produced... How many dislikes did we get? Oh, my goodness. Um, a lot amazing. more than the likes, right? It's very sad to see, actually, yeah. But it's kind of funny because all the people hitting dislike, 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 they're just telling us how many people are reading the article. Very and helpful know, to us, yeah. That's right. It was helpful to us. We, we know a lot Flat Earthers read our article because of the flashback we got from mm -hmm. that community. Obviously, we hit the nail on the head. Which is really sad because they're just following the arguments that atheists used to uh, you attack Christianity with. They're following the atheistic arguments. The atheists are laughing at these guys. 
In fact, I reckon some of them are atheists anyway who are trolling us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's a that's a problem on the internet is you can't tell who the troll is and who the firm believer is. And their arguments are so identi- almost identical, yeah. so it's hard to tell from that either. Yeah, and it's, they're equally silly regardless. Kills me that some Christians have been caught up in these anti-Christian trollish mm-hmm. behaviors. Yeah. Now, when did this theory really start? The flat earth idea. Yeah, the flat earth idea. I think it wasn't until the 19th century as a reaction to these liberal theologians saying that the Bible teaches the flat earth. So, uh, But then you get some people say, well, I better stick with the Bible. Yeah, and I believe the Bible. The Bible says the earth is flat. Okay, let's let's try to yeah, back it up So now. 19th century is when we have this thing, and it seems to have popped up every so often. It goes in waves, and the latest incarnation is thanks to the internet. It wouldn't have happened without the internet. Yeah, without, without YouTube. Without Eric Dubai and without Rob Skiba. Who are, who are both heretics. They're not our friends. They're not. And by the way, if you need documentation on that, go to our article, Refuting Flat Earth. Mm. There is a Who Are the Flat Earth Proponents link. Click on that and you can see a short bio on that. We're not saying that just to, to, to trash somebody. There's good reasons for saying this and for encouraging people to beware of dangerous theologians. One of them was a Buddhist. Well, Eric Dubai is a Holocaust denier who thinks that Jesus didn't exist. And yeah, he thinks that Hitler was a nice guy, really, who's been misunderstood. So yeah. beware. Beware what your source of information is. And honestly, if you're rejecting 2,000 years of Christian scholarship, you all, nearly unanimous Christian scholarship, you're in a perilous position. We don't mm, reject yeah. things just to be rejecting. We don't, we're, not, we're not curmudgeons just for the sake of being a curmudgeon. Yeah, see, we're a pro-Bible ministry. We're not an anti-establishment ministry for the sake of being anti-establishment. So it's important to get your, your priorities right. We want to defend the Bible as and God's Word. We're also pro-science ministry. We are indeed. I mean, we both have PhDs in hard sciences, and we <laughs> love science. We rejoice in science. Our ministry hires more PhD scientists than any other Christian ministry that we know of. So we just laid down a challenge. A challenge to the flat earther that we hope one or two of you out there will pick it up and and see how good this challenge is. We've also thrown a lot of information out there for those of you who might be confused on the issue. And for those of you who know someone who's fallen down this rabbit hole, what you can answer for yourself and maybe, maybe uh, talk to someone about it and maybe pull them out of the rabbit hole. It's a very, very difficult thing. Once someone is so deep into the conspiracy mindset, it's really hard to get out of it. But it is not a biblical statement that the earth is flat. Mm -mm. It is not in Christian theology. It's not in biblical, uh, in the scriptures. It's not in science. It's not in reasoning. It's not in logic. The earth is not flat. In fact, it is a globe. And we love science. Mm -hmm. If you're having trouble believing us, if you're having trouble believing the Bible, if you're having trouble believing what you're reading on the in- or finding on the internet, just chill, relax, go to creation.com, pick out one or two of these articles and just read, clear your mind and just read. You might actually be encouraged and maybe, just maybe, we'll be, be able to change your mind on this. If you are standing against flat earth theory, share this video, share this podcast, click like, do something, subscribe. We, we've got all this good content for you. We want to, you to plug into the rest of CMI's content also. If you hate this and you think the earth is flat, fine, share it anyway. <laughs> See what your friends think about it. Give us a thumbs down if you like. At least we're still tracking you because we know how many people are watching based on thumbs up and thumbs down. We don't mind at all. We want you to be encouraged that the Bible is true. Whether the earth is flat or not is a second question However, theologically and scripturally, it's not. So dig into scripture, dig into science. Let's see how far we can go.